Xbox microphone. But oh yeah, almost forgot how this th whole thing works. I gotta pop it out. But you haven't said anything, so I haven't seen the thing to see if it hears you. I was looking at the screen, and it's just black. Oh, it was just black a second ago. Yeah, it was black because I hadn't popped it out. It's been a while since I've, you know, the, the whole podcast thing. Yeah, it's been a little bit. All right, you ready? Yeah. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scarfinger, and this is Scarcasm. Woo -woo. We are back. We are back. Uh, Chase has moved, and we and so we're able to get everything back going. He's got got a hold of his work schedule, so we know when we can do shows now. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And you no, know, it's just kind of it's kind of cool to be back. You know, I I will say this. I didn't miss it. You didn't miss. Having this, you didn't miss the schedule and all that, but you, but did you miss like the social interaction? Mm, no, <laughs> I'm, I think, I think part of it is like we kept like over over this time, even after you moved, we kind of kept missing each other. Cause like I would get on Xbox Live late, and I'll see you on Xbox Live, and I go to say something, and then you're like, it, Chase is gone. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I don't want to say anything and just try to bring you back because I know that your schedule is different now. Um, so I was just like, okay, I'll just leave it alone. And it's been, it's been a lot of that. Like, most of the time, I don't get on to play a game on, on Xbox until, like, late, like, 11. It's like 10, 11 or some shit like that. And sometimes I'll see you be playing stuff. And then sometimes I'll be like, should I say something? And then I'm like, nah, I'll just leave Chase alone. I'll let him play his little single-player nonsense. Um... <laughs> so it's so it's just been kind of that uh i don't i don't necessarily miss the the i don't i didn't miss the the shows pretty much i missed like the the like the game nights and the chats that we have just kind of just farting around shooting the shit you know like that type of stuff that was the part that i missed a little bit um and so yeah so when i say that i didn't Hell. necessarily miss this Hell, that's we what i mean we can end the podcast and just be a gaming community that does game nights. Um, that's an idea. I, I I don't necessarily want to visit that right now, but that that is still an idea. Um, I would love. To, I still I still would love to be a streamer. I would I would I would love to be a streamer, and just be able to talk to people that way instead of um doing this this way. I did. I participated in some streams with Sam. Um, Sam wanted to get into the division, but of course, when I play division, I play division with Todd, and Todd has a very his his Xbox app is uh, where he talks is very shitty. So, like the idea is, every time we try to talk on on Xbox, the moment he joins, it fucks everything up. So then we have to talk on Discord, but since his Discord wasn't connected to his stream, like we were playing the game together, but you know, all of the stupid shit that we talk about when we play games, no one could hear me and Todd. They can only hear Sam. So it kind of created a, a weird kind of situation. I went back and I watched Sam's um I, I went back and I watched his uh uh the stream that he had. And the fun part about it, um also, I think I think he's on right now. He's Reckless Mage, uh, Reckless, um, yeah, Reckless Mage, uh, and he is streaming the Elder Scrolls uh, Morrowind. I think yes, he is streaming Morrowind right. Now. Um, so but so that was fun. But like going back and rewatching it, I did a whole bunch of like trying to remember what I said. Because, you know, sometimes when we on these game nights and, and just kind of talking to shit like that, it, the shit can go all over the place and just, we just start talking about dumb shit and just trying to make each other laugh. Hey, um, and and plus, kinda... sometimes you have to remind your friends, hey, I'm streaming, I'm streaming, shh, I'm streaming, because they'll be like talking some e either personal stuff or they'll be like, yo, man, you, I, I'll need that language on my stream. <laughs> yeah, because I said, um, 
when we started streaming, we were talking about football, I think, and I said that a, that a team got the R word um, because they got beat really bad. Uh-huh. And then and then Sam was like, uh, you're saying that on the stream. He was like, what am I talking about? You can't hear me anyway. You can't, uh, they can't hear you anyway. So, like, it, it's just one of those things that I, I had to be a little bit more careful. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. Um but honestly, like during this during this past uh, month or so, I just kind of just been enjoying my time. Um, you know, I've been hanging out with my lady friend a lot, um, especially on weekends, and we talk on the phone almost every day. Which you know, some you know, it's cool. Kind of, um, it's cool. But like, <laughs> you, see, you, you say that like that because she's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I'm, no, I'm just telling the truth. Um, so it's it's just, it's just weird having someone to talk to every day. Like, because you know, for a long time, I didn't have that. Like, you, need, you know, you, you need your meme sharer, someone to show memes to in real life. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Showing uh, showing the memes, uh, talking about talking about music and stuff a lot. And I love, I love, 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 love ruining music for her. It is my favorite pastime. It's like. You know what I mean? Like she'd be listening, listen to a song, be like, you know, R. Kelly wrote that. And she'd be like, fuck, I don't want to listen to the song no more. Or then, like, we were talking about um, a CeeLo Green song, and you know, there's instances when CeeLo Green is singing and he gets into his higher register. He kind of sounds like Black Cartman. So, like, <laughs> so especially on the hook of Closet Freak. If you ever listen to Closet Freak, he sounds like Black Cartman. And, and, and CeeLo Green. Shit has some you, you know he he's done some fuck shit in the past and um the and has then when, he done, some, has and, he done but, some fuck shit or he just said some fuck shit i i'm not completely sure but then i love the couple the couple of Norris barkley albums and mm-hmm. but if you like kind of get into some of the lyrics of the like the b-sides and stuff there's some weird shit I mean, like on that first album, there, there's a song about like uh, about necrophilia and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but CeeLo has, has always been weird. He's always been the weird dude. Like the people who are who just learned that he was weird once he went solo and when he did the Norris Barkley stuff. I was like, oh, y'all really didn't listen to Goody Mob, huh? Because he was just kind of on some... It was a little bit more militant at that time. But it was still some weird shit that he was just kind of... He was just kind of over there with it. Yeah. And we just kind of let it go. Well, with that first one, like, people see Crazy as, like, a single. But it is a part of a greater... It, it, it's part of... A, it, it's a... What is it? What is it called? Like, like Pink Floyd shit. It's it's a concept it's a, album. It's a small part of a, it's a yeah it's a part of a whole. It's a yeah, concept. so so all that stuff where there's like songs about necrophilia and there's songs about like just being insane, you know, like it, that. It's it's about basically being insane, <laughs> like the whole album is. But it's just crazy. Was a, yeah. a you know international hit. <laughs> Right, like it, no one thought that that like when we first heard that song, it was like, oh, this is cool, and then it was like, no, 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 no this song is everywhere. <laughs> it, it, this song is everywhere. It, it is doing the numbers right now. And it's just yeah. like, for real, this song, this this one, that one right there. Okay, cool. I guess we're just gonna do that. But as a whole, um, it's it's a really good album, and I like the second album too. That a lot of people, nobody really listened to, but it's it's good too. Danger also, Mouse himself is good too. Like if you ever heard other things by Danger Mouse, I don't think I know very much Danger Mouse, um, um, except for the cartoon. Um, please tell me you know about the cartoon. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Just a, whew, I know we I know we're a little bit different in the generation. You know I me. Mean? I'm a diff, I'm a little bit of a different generation than you. like we write we we straddle the generations you know what but I mean? but that kind of but you got to remember that pre-internet stuff it don't matter what generation you were everybody up until like 
2005 watched the Flintstones and shit. You, you know what I mean? Like, it was right. just because you didn't have the internet, so the thing that you watched was a thing that was always on TV, which was old shit. <laughs> right. Very much so. Um, and then, like, you know, like, and I'll... I'll I mean, you know me, I know like a whole bunch of useless information, especially about music. So like, like explaining to someone like the song Happy by Pharrell is Pharrell doing his best CeeLo impression. That's kind of like, just, that's kind of like the, 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 the Bootsy Collins and Jimi Hendrix thing too. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, but like he basically, he did a reference track because CeeLo was supposed to sing the song. CeeLo, the record company was like, dog, we're not letting you go over there to go sing a movie for this fucking kids movie. Are you out of your fucking mind? Cause remember happy was on the despicable me soundtrack. Yeah. Originally. Um, now I've never seen despicable B because I don't watch kids stuff, but, um, but yeah. So like the, the record company was like, man, we ain't letting you go do no fucking kids movie. But that, that... And so Pharrell, Pharrell took his reference track, cleaned it up and made it the song. So, like, that song is his reference track of him doing his best CeeLo impression because that's how he wanted CeeLo to sing it. But, um, Farrell and, like, like, Nerd did a lot of the music in that movie. So, yeah, Farrell, I mean, Farrell did all of the music in that movie, I think. Yeah. So, that all, I mean, as a parent that has kids, you know, I mean, the, the music in that movie is good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I'm I'm a homer, you know, Pharrell's from Virginia, so like, I'm a homer, so I I completely understand. I 100 percent understand what's happening here, but I I just don't watch kids movies. And but if they were like, oh, Celia Green can't do this, but Pharrell can, but yeah, Pharrell has this nice image now, but Nerd, it, you know, was just as explicit as everything else, <laughs> you know. Ooh. Absolutely, I love. I loved, especially the first Nerd album. is fantastic. Um, the second one is the second one is okay. It's not my favorite. There's a couple of joints up there that I really fuck with. Um, the third one was really good. I really like the third one. But I'm a homer, so of course I'm gonna say this. So like, you know, I you ain't never really gonna hear me like really be like really down on a on, on an artist from virginia especially if they're not from if they're from hampton roads nope you ain't never gonna hear me do that but like i really i really fuck with the music i fuck with their music like that and i watch his i watch the four the four count start um thing every few weeks just because it's fun have you ever seen that for Pharrell starts every song that he produced with four counts. One, two, three, four, and then the song starts. Every song. Every song that he produced starts off like that. Huh. Yep. It is like any song that you can think of that he's done has a four count start. Well, that's cool though. I I mean I, I um I myself like leaving the counts in to songs sometimes. You yeah. Know. Gives and it a nice little the, raw feeling. And it also begs the question because there was an intellectual um, thing where these, these music intellectuals was trying to figure out where the one was on um, on uh, on Kendrick Lamar's All Right. Because like some people thought that the one was in a different place than where it is. I think naturally I kind of gravitated to where the one is. But if you pay attention, it has a four count start. Da, 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 da. Like the song starts off like that. He counts it off for you. So you know exactly where the, the, four, the, the, the one is. But there was a, there was like a big deal with music intellectuals and like some of those like Adam Neely and some of those like music YouTubers and stuff like that really had like these conversations about where the one was in all right. It was just really, it was kind of comical because it seemed very obvious to me. Oh, oh, speaking of accounts and stuff, there was a comment on the burial reaction that we did and there were, cause you were talking about how, you were getting a little frustrated because sometimes like the beat would change or something, or like you could feel the count being a little off. 
Well, apparently, I didn't even know this. I knew that he was very DIY about his stuff, but when he made his music, he wasn't even using a DAW. Like he, like everything was freehand and like this, like Source Forge or something. Okay. It, like so, that's why some things are a little off because everything was done by ear, not by looking at a. It's kind of a um, what's his name? Um, Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla yeah. didn't quantize. Jay Dilla didn't quantize. Right. Yeah. Neither did he. So yeah. So yeah. So like, do you know like, um. Quest Love always says when he first heard a Dilla song, he was like, like, why did the drums sound like they're being played by a drunken five-year-old? Because they weren't quantized. And of course, he was trained to be a human metronome. Mm -hmm. And like when he had to start doing some of that stuff on his own, once he finally met Jay Dilla and like understood what was happening there um, and then producing songs for like D'Angelo and stuff like that, that actually required that. Um, you know, he had to unlearn everything that he's learned in his life in order to play like that drunken five-year-old. <laughs> and like the, the whole, the whole thing is like, there was a, um, there's a song, uh, for D'Angelo called Fish Grease. Mm -hmm. And the Fish Grease has that kind of, has that kind of drum, but he, he said that he had to take his headphones off. He couldn't listen to the rest of the stuff because if he listened to the rest of it, he knew where the beats were supposed to be. And he couldn't play like the drunken five-year-old if he could hear where his beats were supposed to be. So it's like, it's like a bunch of stuff like that. U useless information, but I listen to Quest Love Supreme every week. So the, the current, current episode is, uh, he has two, two of the members from Blondie. That's it's it's interesting, but right now, where I stopped at, um, because like I said, my commute isn't very long. We're still in the early stages of them um, playing clubs and stuff like that, like right before the actual group Blondie gets formed. So like it was, they were talking about what they did leading up to that point. So, they can, but, well, they kind of come from the punk rock stuff, right? Yes, but. But even though, even though they said um, that um, Rapture, I didn't know that rap the song Rapture was heavily influenced by Good Times. You know, the disco song, mm -hmm. the one that was basically recreated for Rapper's Delight. Rapture was basically their version of Good Times. It's like they were heavily influenced by Good Times when they made Rapture. So that that's why Rapture sounds like that. Hmm. So it's, it's just like a lot, a lot of stuff like that that you learn when you listen to these podcasts and stuff like that. And I really enjoy it. So, man, so you moved. You're, I, you're, a, you're a Kentuckian. I am. Jesus. I, I normally have do not disturb on my phone when I'm doing podcasts, but I'm out of I'm out of the habit. Look at there, we hear it said that Nepo is live on Twitch. Reckless Mage is also live, so he's you know taking our. I told you that he's 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 um he's playing Elder Scrolls. He's playing more one. Yeah, uh, Discord says that we are live. You texted me, Reddit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Reddit is sending me relationship advice stuff, but, um, <laughs> maybe they think it's easy, but anyway, well, I think it's because I did look at one that like just popped up and just like reading like these people's like complaints sometimes is entertaining. It's like, there was this one girl that was like been with a guy for like seven years and she's now like at a thing where you're like, well, he stank when I met him, but I thought I could like basically fix him. But now he still stinks and he won't take a bath and he won't put on deodorant. And sometimes he'll think it's funny and waft it in my direction. And I'm like, it's seven years. He's like 30 years old. You ain't changing that. He's a stanky nope. dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a stinky motherfucker. Like, and like you just got to deal with the fact that you you picked a stinky motherfucker. You thought you could change him. That never works. I just want you to know that, sweetheart. Um, whichever sweetheart I'm, uh, it could actually listen to this, sweetheart. If you think that you're gonna change him, that's not really gonna happen. It rarely happens. And and when it does happen, usually, 
usually he gets to the point to where he resents you for it and he makes you pay for it. Either he leaves or he cheats on you. He does uh, certain things. Maybe he maybe he might know somebody who does like stinky motherfuckers, so he'll be a stinky <laughs> motherfucker for life. Yeah, yeah. Gang, if, gang. Yeah, because it, it, it gets to the point to where, like, if you actually do change him and he changes for you, at that point, you're the bad guy. <laughs> exactly. And that's how you're going to be seen in his eyes. That's a that's a am I the asshole type situation. Yes, you are the asshole. Because you got with him knowing this about him and you thought you could change him. And it's been seven years and you still think that you can change him. That's not going to happen. If you couldn't change him in the first couple of months, you are not going to change him in the, in the prevailing years. Sorry, sweetheart. You you are in with a stinky motherfucker, and if that bothers you, then then you just need to leave him. Beauty and the Beast is fictional. Hmm. Huh? I said Beauty and the Beast. It? Beauty and the Beast is fictional. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know the 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 Beast was a the Beast looked like he took a bath. Well, I, I know the the I can change him thing. <laughs> I know. Oh you know, no, no, not beating the, the, the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. I got him mixed up. Sorry. No, nah, li Little Mermaid is not. I can change him. Little Mermaid is. But Daddy, I love him. Like that's the. Well, that's a Little Mermaid. That's two sides of the same coin. <laughs> no, no, it's so that's so completely different. Like she changed herself to be with him. Oh, she, I guess. She changed yeah, she changed herself to be with him. So, like, no, it's it's yeah, not you're, quite the same thing. Yeah, you're right. Like, she's like, yo, I'm a mermaid, and I'm out here in these in these in these in these sea streets, and it's like, nah, 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 dog, I want to walk. It's like, why the fuck would you want to walk? No, 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 I want to walk because I love him. Swimming is so much faster. <laughs> Swimming is so much better. If you can fucking breathe underwater. Like I would never, I would never be on the land. Why would I ever do that? Why would I ever want to do that? It's like, fuck that, fuck this, fuck this shit here. I'm down under the sea. <laughs> Even under the sea, like when you start listening to the lyrics, like it's a little nasty. <laughs> it's a little nasty. Like they snuck in some stuff on that song, or under the sea, like that. That that little crap was talking about some pussy, but like, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about it. Like, the little crap talking about some pussy, dog. Like, so like, there's some, there's some I, lyrics. You know, they did a lot of, of that. that sneaky shit. I thought of like, what if there was a horror movie, right? You mm -hmm. say, "Make America Great Again" three times in the mirror, and Donald Trump's hand comes out of the toilet and grabs your pussy. <laughs> I would be horrified because I don't have one of those. Your pussy's in your butthole. You just don't use it. That, that's a bussy. <laughs> like we talk, like bussy. Bussy is for like for for gay men. They call it a bussy. Um, speaking of bussy, have you seen? Have you have you started watching Last of Us? No, I have oh not. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro. The last episode, The Last of Us, the most recent episode. Man, I never, I didn't think that I would get emotional about this shit. But yo, I was like, yo, I was shedding real thug tears, dog. You, but you got emotional about the game too, right? No, because I didn't play very much of the game. I mean, I got emotional about the first part of the game. Yes, and I, I, I I've said I've told that story too many times, but yes, I got emotional about the beginning of the game, and then I tried to go back and play it, and I just couldn't, so I sent it back to GameFly, and then I game flew it for the PS4, and the fucking game wouldn't start, so I never actually got a chance to play the game. Well, oh. hmm. So now I really want to. Well, with this I'm new not... like this new version, I've heard this like if you never played it, don't try to play the old version. <laughs> Cause, you know, it's um they revamped the controls and stuff, and those old Naughty Dog controls are a little bit hard to get used to if you're used to newer games, I guess. <laughs> you know. Okay. Yeah, I just um, I 
I, I I always wanted I wanted to go back and play it. That's why I rented it, and then it just wouldn't start. And I did all I deleted it and reinstalled it like three times. And the shit I just the shit just would not start for me. And I don't know why it wouldn't start, but. It just kind of sucks because I, I really did want to play it, and then of course I don't have a PS5, so I don't have the new the new Spangly version, um, but um, the newfangled per- version I'll say newfangled person version. Um, so like, and then I'm watching these videos after I watch the episodes. I watch the videos, and they're talking about things that are the same or what's different from the games versus the the show. Now I do know what happened. Hmm. I do know what happens, so I I know I know how it ends. I don't know a lot about the 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 middle. Well, that's kind of like the the selling port of the game is like that journey, you know. Right. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the journey. I know a little bit about the journey, but I know how it starts and I and I know how it ends. And then I know how the I know how the second one starts, but I don't know anything past the start. Well, it gave you some feelings, but just just let you know that the journey is more than a feeling. So, yeah. So, so I'll at some point I'll probably try to see if I can find a PS4 version. I can probably find one for really cheap. Um, you know, they might try to jack the price up. You know what I mean? Because the show's out. But I think I'll I'll get to it. I'll get around to it eventually. Well, you and, you may um Blue's trying to get you on that PC thing and the. I think the the part one is supposed to be coming to PC soon. <laughs> That's good. I'm I'm working on um I'm working on I'm gonna just build from scratch. I'm gonna leave this one alone, and then I'm just gonna I'm just starting over. Um, well, that might be gonna... cool. So you can have your podcasting machine kind of upstairs, and then maybe you can have your actual gaming one hooked to your TV downstairs. You know. Right. So like that might be that might be what what ends up happening. Um, I don't one hundred percent know how I'm going to do that yet, but I do have a desk in my living room now. Situation where I could just set up the desk mm-hmm. if I want to do something. You know, it's a it's a lot of different things, a lot of different options. Um, so maybe I um. So like, how was the transition? It it was weird. Like at at first i um you know cuz i was out of work for like a month not out of work i just between me stopping work and me starting work was a month december 9th to january 9th and mm-hmm. um as soon as we got here it pretty much be we got unnaturally cold weather it was like negative 20 or something like it was like colder than I, I like the cold, you know what I mean? If it's like a nice 45 to 50, like it feels, the, the air feels clean to breathe, like feels nice and crisp. This was different, man. It felt like, it didn't even feel cold. It felt like it just made your bones hurt, you know? Damn. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, you from North Carolina, this 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 is a diff- this is a whole different type of cold. But, um, yeah, it, but Dylan said that that's not normal. It's just, we just got that as soon as we got here. So we were like, what if we got ourselves into? He was like, no, that, that was some sort of like big blizzard. And we got the very bottom of it that kind of, right. but, but anyway, so we weren't able to do some stuff that we needed to get done at first because we couldn't go nowhere. Cause it was freaking a blizzard. <laughs> right. So I still haven't got my license changed, but I had, I really have 90 days to do that anyway. Okay. The, um, oh yeah, because every time something weird would happen, I would be like, man, I need to talk about this on the podcast, but then it was like times and times and times. There's a place around around here called Sir Pizza, Mm -hmm. and, um, is that around in Virginia? I don't know. I've never heard of Sir Pizza. Okay. Well, Sir, like, you know, like a king, like, like Sir Mm -hmm. Pizza, but, um, it was on Grubhub. And, you know, sometimes if there's certain things on Grubhub, they can use it just as online ordering. So if you just get it pick up, there's no fees or anything. You just basically just order online. Well, I did that. I waited. It said it was cooking. It said, oh, it's done now. I went out there. 
they were like, what Grubhub? <laughs> He's like, do we do Grubhub? And then the other guy, and they started arguing with each other. And you're like, okay, well, what was it? And I had to give them the order again. And we had to wait again. And then they were fighting. And then the, <laughs> and then the whole dining room like was just filled with boxes. And we were like, I was like, what is going on here? And then... And then one of the drivers, all of a sudden, he was just, I, I, I went up to the window to see what was going back there. And all of a sudden he goes, his eyes light up and he goes, what's up, Fred? And I'm like, and I looked at Dylan. And he was like, what's, what's it going, punk? How you been? And I looked at Dylan and then he was like, wait, Fred ain't got no uh, ponytail. Or he's like, Uncle Fred ain't got no ponytail. And I was like, and so you, so you were Fred. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, and then, and then, dude, he was like, "Dude, man, it's you know why it's taking them so long? They're back there. They're saying they're making all these pieces. They ain't making pieces. They think they're making pieces. They're back there tweaking, man. They're a bunch of meth heads. And then <laughs> it's like the owner's just over here scratching his ass, man. And I was just like. <laughs> Jesus, See, I, you wouldn't have known all of this information if you weren't Fred. Yeah, he wouldn't have told. He he only told this because it was Fred. Right. So, man, pizza was good though. It was kind of a square pizza with like a bunch of stuff on it. But I don't know, man. I was like, maybe I finally have gotten some local feeling, like because that was because I felt that when I moved to the mountains for a while. Like when you're around some people that are kind of live there, or whatever. But then you might you meet the local locals, and it's and they probably say the same thing about where you're from or where I'm from. It's like people are weird if you're not from there. It's not that they're weird to you. They're you think they're weird <laughs> because yes. they're, it's different. <laughs> I one hundred one hundred percent thought that the people in Richmond were weird. Um, they were very weird to me when I first came here and I first like got a job and started working and meeting people and stuff like that. The people just seemed so odd to me. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the mountains, people didn't say y'all. They said yuns. Okay. <laughs> so I had to get used to that. <laughs> but, but here, um, I mean, it's cool. Like we're, I, I mean, it feels like it's in the country, but we're so close to everything. It's just we're just like right outside of town to where we're still. I think we, I don't think we have a town address, but we have a county address. So um, everything delivers here, so that's good. You know, Jimmy John's yeah. and all that stuff, but Fuck yeah. it's it's just a very midwestern looking neighborhood. Like that you would see on a TV show about the Wonder Years or whatever. It's it's like that, you know. Wow. <laughs> but um, it's everything that is cool is in like a fast food is in the area. I've I've never lived near a Popeyes or a Arby's that was convenient for me, and they're like right across the street from each other. Because sometimes you don't you don't want a burger. You want something different. And Popeyes and Arby's has that. <laughs> I used to pass by. I used to pass by Popeyes every day, back and forth to work. And the Popeyes, like, remember, I used to pass by this Popeyes when the chicken sandwich was like a huge deal, and it was lines all the way out to the street and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, so like, I used to pass by that place every day, looking up at those people like, y'all out your fucking around <laughs> building to get a fucking chicken sandwich. Well, um, um you think that um. People have been like that at Chick Fil A for um, ever since it opened. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's that's different. That's the Lord's chicken. <laughs> like that's a, that's 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 the Lord's chicken. It tastes like misogyny, racism, and um, homophobia. <laughs> and those things taste good. <laughs> those taste like unfortunately, those things taste fantastic. <laughs> the Lord's chicken. And like, like for real, like I, I feel, I don't, I don't feel right if like I take home some Polynesian, and I go to put my Polynesian on inferior chicken. Like I don't feel right about that shit, dog. <laughs> like y'all, y'all, y'all just getting y'all inferior chicken, y'all not the chicken. 
Y'all are get, not getting my good Polynesian. I am putting some regular ass sweet and sour sauce on y'all because I am not besmirching the Lord's chicken. I mean, if some chicken that's not the Lord's chicken for, for this good old the Lord's Polynesian sauce. Like, that's not going to happen. Even if you buy, like, free range and you, like, get, like, the best chicken and you make it yourself and it's the fantastic chicken better than the Lord's I'm, chicken. I am not a good chicken cooker, but I will say this. I have learned how to make... Um, uh, fried rice, like the Asian style fried rice, Chinese style fried rice, and I've learned how to make a uh, like a beef and broccoli type deal, but like making them from scratch, like, and I have like the the things that they want you to do to the chicken to make it like the way that the that the the Chinese places make their chicken mm -hmm. has made chicken actually pretty. Deep. I'm notoriously bad at cooking chicken. Like I can't fry chicken to save my life. Hmm. But when I made the chicken for these dishes, it actually turned out all right and tasted great too. You pan fry? Yes, because you know you cut it, you cut it up, mm -hmm. and then you put some things in, um, like the secret ingredient. They don't tell you this. There's two secret ingredients when you go to marinate your chicken, right? Two secret ingredients: pinch of sugar. A teaspoon, a teaspoon, baking soda. Apparently, that apparently that thing did the trick because the chicken was off the chain both of the times I made it. Because that first time I made some fried rice, chicken and shrimp fried rice. Mm -hmm. And then I made the the chicken. I made chicken and broccoli, and then I fried the. But I didn't put, I put some vegetables in the fried rice, but I didn't put no meat in it because the chicken and broccoli, of course. Okay. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I mean, like, really good. It's a very, very, very strong flavors, like the, 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 like the sesame oil and all that kind of stuff that you got to use in that was super fucking strong. Other than that, it taste, actually tasted pretty good. Sweet. I was proud of myself. I've I've had to do stuff like my oven stopped working, and my 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 landlord has been dragging his feet on getting my oven back working. So I I've been having to do stuff to kind of make up for the fact that I can't bake right now. So I've gotten into making Rice Krispie treats because they don't require an oven. Mm -hmm. I my stove works. My oven does not. Are you making like craft uh, Rice Krispie treats? Oh, let me tell you. First ones that I made, I made some cookies and cream Rice Krispie treats, which means I made the Rice Krispie treats. I broke up some Oreos and put those in the Rice Krispie treats. Then I put a layer of white chocolate over the top of it with some more, more finely grounded Oreos and put that across the top. Let me tell you something. Those things were great, but they are super sweet. Holy fuck, they're super sweet. Hmm. And then the second time I made, I used, I didn't put the stuff across the top. I did it the same way with the Oreos, but I used lemon Oreos this time. Okay. I mean, Rice Krispie Treats with lemon Oreos. No shit's bang. But the, I, the, do, I, made, I, I do love me some lemon Oreos. They're, they're highly underrated. Yes, very much so. I think other than... I think those are my favorite Oreos, actually. Except, except maybe, maybe I think birthday cake ones are kind of up there. How are you Ch on like the when they put more stuff in it? I like it when they do. I I like the red velvets. I like the the. No, no the not that. Oil. I meant like the, you know, like double stuff, mega stuff, and all that stuff. I Which like you... the double stuff. I got the mega stuff just to get it, but that's like too much stuff. Like double stuff. Is I cool, think I think so too. Double stuff is when you're just like feeling a little bit extra. You know what I mean? But the single, mm -hmm. it's it, it's got a good balance. You know, just the regular Oreos, the, the balance is right. Mega stuff, it's like when you bite it, the whole thing falls apart. That's why you know it's too much. Yeah, mega stuff is like a whopper. Like you know, like how you can't eat a whopper without it the rest of it being wrapped up in the paper because all of that shit is going to go somewhere. <laughs> and 
and you ain't got nothing to wrap the mega stuff in or the the you know that shit like so like soon as you bite it like all of that stuff just kind of comes oozing the fuck out and you're just kind of like yeah, well i mean this is kind of fucking up my next bite right. so like i get to the point where i got a big mouth i might as well just eat the whole fucking thing in one shot instead of trying to take bites out of it and then if you're like <laughs> One shot in Oreos, you look terrible. You're like, this is not a good look here. I mean, most of the time ain't nobody here but me. So right. I, how, am I, how am I truly going to feel about this? You know what I mean? I mean, but would you at work just be like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, no, no, no. I would never, ever, ever bring mega stuff or something beyond double stuff to work. That is some horrible fucking idea. <laughs> That is a horrible idea, and I would never, ever, ever. But like, there's some, there's some other ones. Um, I've looked at all kinds of recipes. There's a Snickers one that I want. To make, um, where you make the Rice Krispies, and then you put um, a layer of caramel, some peanuts, and then some milk chocolate over. Um, that's good. I was gonna do like the Funfetti ones, where you use a bit of fruity pebbles in it. Like you make it like normal, but you use the pebbles. But, you, but the lady that I watched make, she also put some white chocolate chips in it. She let it cool down a little bit so that the white chocolate didn't really melt in it. It was kind of added a little bit of crunch to it. I you just added white chocolate chips to it. I remember having some off-brand Rice Krispie treats where you can get them bought. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I don't know which ones these were, but they were better than regular Rice Krispie treats because they were. It was like, there was like whole, like the little tiny marshmallows. There was whole one of those inside of them some periodically. Yes. I've seen those too, but I've seen those in ones that I know I probably don't give a shit about. I might make somebody else. But the, I saw the lady, the same lady that made confetti Snickers ones. She also made a s'mores one. So she mixed the ones up and then she let it cool down a little bit. Added a few more um, mini marshmallows. Added some golden grams in the chocolate. Okay. And made s'mores ones with it. But I'm not a huge fan of s'mores. Somebody would definitely make them, but I ain't never going to make those for myself. But yeah, I definitely have seen people do the thing where they, they wait for it to cool down a little bit, add a couple more mini marshmallows, make like a Rocky Road type deal. I mean, I... I, I like the flavor combination of s'mores, but I don't like the messiness. The I love, I mean, a graham cracker. Graham crackers are... I love graham crackers. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, during, during, the, during the Christmas break or during the holiday time, I really got into making Christmas crack. And instead of making it with saltines like most people do, I use graham crackers. And those just was fire, dog. Hmm. What is Christmas crack? Okay, Christmas crack. Here's what you do. Take a take a take like a sheet, uh, like a, a a sheet pan. Okay. Like a, a cookie sheet. You lay down a whole bunch of crackers, and you kind of line them up and all that kind of stuff. Fill the whole pan with the crackers. Then you make like a custom like toffee type thing. You make that in a pan, and you pour that over there. You pour that over the, the the graham crackers, and then you put it in the oven for a couple of minutes just to get it warmed up and all that kind of stuff. Then you take chocolate chips, and then you just sprinkle them all over the top. Leave them alone. Let them melt. And then you spread the melted chocolate over all of it, and then you put some toppings on it. Um, I've made basically three different ones, um, but the, the one that I like the most... I made a kind of a peanut butter one, and that shit was great because I used um, milk chocolate, and I also used Reese's um, chips, mm -hmm. and then I had this mix where it had uh, peanuts in it, it had Reese's pieces, and small Reese's peanut butter cups that I chopped up a little bit, and kind of put that all over the top. That was great. Which is great. I just, I was just doing stuff like I ain't had nothing else better to do. I was just making shit. I made this cake, and honestly, this is the best cake I've ever made in my like for real deal. I so like those. You. I like those things to where like because when you said like crackers and stuff, 
like it's crazy how you would think of people would make um you, you know the things you can buy in the store it's like oreos but they're like covered in white chocolate or yogurt or whatever mm -hmm. it's like those but they're like um like ritz and peanut butter but they had the white chocolate on it and that co that flavor combination is really good and you wouldn't think that because you know i wouldn't think ritz and white chocolate would go together but it really does <clears throat> yeah, it actually yeah it, it, it really does i um i made this cake right i'm gonna tell you it's the best cake i've ever made in my life okay okay so i took a lemon cake made the cake and then i used a uh, strawberry jello to make it a strawberry lemonade poke cake then I took the Cool Whip on top and I put some more of the strawberry jello into the Cool Whip before I spread it over everything. And then I took lemon Oreo, added some, and I ground that up and made, um, made crumbs out of it. Mm -hmm. Then I added some of the, um, the, the, the strawberry jello. And added some butter to make it a little bit of butter to make crumbs, and I put the crumbs over the whole top. And it is the best cake I've ever made in my. Life. And I've made a lot of cakes, dog. Like I made a lot of cakes. Right. Yeah. This that was your, like baking sweets is like what's like your thing for. I think that was before I even come on the podcast. You were doing that I shit. Mean, I I do get a, I do get a little bug up my ass, and I just want to like bake stuff. I got I got into like making like cookie cakes for a while, mm -hmm. where I where I didn't want to actually make the end, of it, but I can make it in like a nine inch pan, and I can make a cookie cake and just let it be what it is. And like that that was working for me for a long time. I was making cookie cake around Thanksgiving ish time. Because it just saved me time and energy. Because I didn't want to make individual cookies at that point. Right. But um, but yeah, man. I just sometimes I get a bug in my ass, and then and but like since since my oven stopped working, I can't really bake a whole bunch. And like it, it you know, I sometimes I get dispersed and I want to do a whole bunch, and then I don't do anything for like a long. <laughs> but since I can't, <laughs> now I want to. <laughs> It's like you said, sometimes I get the squirts, and but you said the spurts. Spurts, yes, yeah, spurts. I don't get no, I don't get no squirts. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an old man. I ain't that old. What? Damn. So, but yeah, so yeah, it's just like, are are we even gonna make it to consumption? I mean, we're just kind of catching up because it's been a couple months. I mean, it's been a month of some change. Yeah. Well, I, I talked to you a little bit about it on uh on the phone but yeah i went to a i mean it was new for the area but it was also new for me for like the last 20 years i actually went to a hardcore show like a legitimate hardcore show not like a metal show not a you know yeah, doom metal. I, I saw the, i saw the videos that you posted but um aiden was there and he enjoyed himself and the scene there was very very cool like it was like uh, like people were a little awkward. People didn't know exactly what they're supposed to do, you know, because once it becomes that and everyone's like, Oh, we got to do a certain thing. Then the scene kind of eats itself and it becomes, uh, like hipsterish, you know what I mean? Like gatekeepy and all this stuff. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like with, with you and your girl. The, once your sex life gets to like going through the motions, like we we're here to do. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of loses this thing where you're just kind of like, all right, I'm going to lift your leg about here, about yay, and you're going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and then we both get to where we're going, and then you're, I'm going to go over there. And, and then over, we'll it be just be, it becomes nipple, it becomes Nickelback. Yes, you know? very much so. <laughs> it, it becomes Nickelback. <laughs> but, so, uh, so I understand what you're saying. Like, once, once we, once... Once the once the language is in the 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 movements are hard coded into you, it loses its luster. Yeah, but it was very cool. Like every, it was very. It's almost like it was budding. Like it was just starting. And apparently that venue, which is, is also a, like a um, like a burrito place. It's called Girls 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 Burritos, and they have like a lot of vegan options. 
you know, and stuff like that. So it's that kind of place. But it so it, it day it, it but it moonlights as like a punk venue. But during the day, it's basically like this. <laughs> like little bistro place, you know what I mean? Because at first when I went in there, I was but, like, "There's." T- every time you go there, do you get that song in your head? Was that was that Van Halen? Is it Van Halen? Does the, 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 the girls 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 song? I thought that was one. Well, that oh, Molly girls Crew, girls. Molly Crew. Okay. Molly Crew. Uh, uh, you know me, white people. Um, well, well, Beastie Boys also has a girls song, and I didn't know. <laughs> okay, but um, but the song I'm thinking of is Motley Crue. Okay, but but yeah, it was very cool. Um, I I made some video. Uh, the The next show that was going to be there, I was staying up, and I didn't want to go to a show, and it made me tired. That was my first night staying up all night, so I didn't go, and I kind of wanted to go, but um. And now I, I I haven't seen when the next one is, but but yeah, it was cool. And I kind of want to get into filming because I used to do that back in the day. The pixel videos look good; they didn't sound too good to me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I was wondering about like cameras that might have a better microphone or something. But I would really like to document this scene as it's you know popping off because everybody was going off in such a small place like and, and it's not even people like are dressing weird it's not like they're like they're not wearing a uniform like this is how you're supposed to be like a dude's with with a mullet and a leopard skin shirt with overalls freaking tearing it up <laughs> you know what I mean? okay. but <laughs> so yeah i um it was cool like the one band age of panic they were Lexington people, and apparently, I, I don't know if the band has been de- le- that long, or if they've been in other bands, but they seem kind of local legendy because when they played, everybody went off, and, like, people were, like, it was just another feeling, like, it felt something special. When the other bands everyone liked, even the Colorado band was, um, which was Moral Law, which I'm wearing the shirt, they, um... People went off for them, but not like they did Age of Panic. So I think that was a special thing, you know. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, it's just like you know, like you may you may got a name, but these are our people. Yeah, and the Cincinnati band they were cool too because we were right next to their merch table, and they were talking to Aiden, and you know the 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 guitarist was a female, and she was like talking to him about Persona because he had a Persona shirt on, and like they they were everybody was super supportive of Aiden because he was like kind of being awkward and. Like, he was like, <laughs> there's this guy that said, what's up? And my voice cracked and I didn't know what to do. Cause I, so I was like, what's up? And he was like, well, that happens to me too, dude. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's what I tell my daughter all the time. Like, you know, like I've, I've never been, I've never been a young lady, but I've been 14 before. Yeah. <laughs> like we all know what it's like to be 14 and to kind of like be kind of like, kind of shy and not really understand but so you just kind of play to the room you know what i mean like that type of thing i i i, I think it was good is it it's good for aiden to kind of get and be amongst the people yeah and um and and moral law was cool because they were like a vegan straight edge band but they were so not preachy which was very cool mm-hmm. and like the shirts had like little things on them. It didn't say like go vegan or fuck yourself or whatever, but it had things on them where you kind of knew what they were getting at. Like the princess yeah. Mononoke dudes, you know? And, okay. and like the, the, the hoodie that he got was like a little bunny character with a wrench. And you would kind of like get what it was saying without it being, you know, shoved yeah, down your like, throat. This shirt, this shirt doesn't say meat e- equals murder. You right. Know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That would have been a step too fucking far, sir. <laughs> so that was cool. Uh, you're not turning. This, you're not going to turn. This- not turning to what? You broke up. Vegan. Oh no, I I've, I tried that with my early early twenties. Vegetarianism I could probably do, but veganism is just like. Veganism okay. is a the difference between vegetarian or what is the thing where you just eat fish stuff. Some people call it ve- vegeta- pescatarian. pescatarian. Pes- Those mm-hmm. can be an actual diet to where you're doing it for health reasons. Veganism right. is a is a political stance. 
like you don't do veganism because of for your health you know <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know what i mean but it, it's just i like some vegan stuff like if like there's a like this that's completely vegan not trying to be meat or whatever like it, i mean it's good like if you have a sandwich and it's got like all these different things and like but it's all like expensive freaking like greens and stuff i mean it's good like you know a lot of good flavors but i still would like you know what you know what make this um vegan wrap even better fucking bacon man <laughs> yeah or fucking hamburger let me tell you something about fucking hamburger i just discovered like really really discovered and like me and my me and my lady at the time and um wawa's hamburgers are fucking fantastic sir oh my god those fucking oh, hamburgers you, that you, they serve at Wawa you, are greatness, you know, sir. You know what we have? And I haven't you been have, to it yet. You have, you have a Bucky's. We do. And everyone talks about the, the greatness that is mm -hmm. Bucky's. I don't know anything about Bucky's. Ain't no Bucky. <laughs> but but people talk about Bucky's. People speak about Bucky's extremely high. And For me know, on it, trips, the, the place to go was always Loves, you know. But like it um so but i heard that bucky's as a whole it's like disneyland but a truck stop <laughs> yes yeah very much so the way that it was explained to me um on, by several people is like they ex they they talk okay when when you when you talk to someone about bucky you talk to someone who has been to bucky's they kind of talk about it with the same kind of youthful exuberance as people who used to talk about pokemon to you what? You know what I mean? Back 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 before you completely understood what like Pokemon was, like the, the the young people that were just like, yo, let me tell you about Pokemon, dog. And it's <laughs> like and it's like you're just kinda like, I don't get it. It is like the people explaining it to you, they are so excited about about it. They're not really explaining to you what makes it great. They're just talking about how great it is, but they're not explaining it to some they're not explaining it to someone who doesn't know. They're just explaining it from the perspective of I've been and it's fucking dope, sir. Um so like I don't really I don't know. It's gonna be it, it might be a little bit before I get to a Bucky's. Well, I mean, next extra life you might be getting a Get making a trip to Kentucky, you know what I mean? You sure about that? <laughs> Maybe we get Matt to come down. He he lives not too far from me now. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. I I mean I mean that's something to figure out later. But but yeah, this... but Loves has always been like you, you know it's nothing crazy, but you you want to get a buffalo chicken. But it's shaped in a hot dog, and you put that on a hot dog bun. <laughs> That's loves what loves is. Has, loves don't, loves are the ones that typically has like a. I didn't catch what you just said. I said that loves are the ones that typically has a center bun in it. I don't think the one that I the ones that I went to had a center bun, but they. That seems I like something. I think there's one going to like Northern Virginia that has a center bun in it, and I know people who like yo yo yo. I'm gonna stop right here so we can give brother Cinnabon. <laughs> Cause they they're um normally tied to some sort of like some of them are tied to a McDonald's, some of them are tied to a Arby's or whatever. So there might be one that's tied to a Cinnabon. So I don't know. I'm gonna tell you, I went to uh, in the airport one time. I went to an A and W, and I was like, "Yo, why are there not more A and Ws around?" There was an A and W that was tied with a Long John Sivers when I lived in the mountains, and before I really got lactose, I mean I always kind of been, but it was never like crazy like these days. Root beer float like is something special, you know. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of root beer, but I, I hear what you're saying. I can do I can do like a a cola float or some shit like that probably be in a better position never yeah. been a huge root beer fan i can drink root beer but like if i have any other choice i'm probably not going to choose the root beer well people that don't like root beer i'm like have you had like 
good root beer, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you know what sucks? That fucking barks. It's like soda that's flavored like root beer. It tastes like the root beer suckers. That's terrible. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm always forever at IBC, but AMW is good, but IBC is, if I'm going to get root beer, it's going to be that. Nah, if I'm getting one of those, I'm getting a fucking cream soda. I'm not getting a root well, I like cream soda too. I want cream soda float. That'd be good. That'd cream be soda, diabetes. And, and, yeah, di- diabetes. Uh, cream soda with some with some Fireball in it. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, I've always wanted to try like the because like a big stout like the Guinnesses and the Kentucky mm-hmm. uh, breakfast stout. They're supposed to be to where you can have them with ice cream. It's supposed to be really good. I've never did it though. Okay. Like a float with that, but. That sounds interesting. I think I would probably be in the bathroom for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, you don't... There's certain things you don't want to be like, you know what I'm going to do? I want to get fucked up right now. Like, something called, like... Like, peach vanilla something. That's not what you want to get fucked up on. <laughs> no. That That's for you to be like, hmm, this has a little alcohol in it, and it tastes good. That's what you want. You don't want to get fucked up on that shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna get fucked up regardless because I'm a cheap drunk. Yeah, <laughs> I like I'm I'm a very cheap drunk, so it ain't go. It's gonna, oh, it's, it's gonna do me wrong. It, it happened to me, man. It, first time in a long time. New Year's what Eve. Happened? New Year's Eve, you got right. I got schnookered. <laughs> like okay, I was, so I was you- trying to think of a word that like felt more than drunk. I was. Like they they were like oh man we're I was like I'm trying to keep up with for some reason I thought everybody was more drunker than I was I was like I'm trying to okay. keep up with you guys and they were like no we're trying to keep up with you you've had like five shots of this Maker's Mark and I'm like but it's good and <laughs> and then I had I, I was trying to get the last one and my brother tried to take it from me and we both spilled it on my foot and I was like that was seventy four dollars on my foot. Like a like that big of a Maker's Mark is like seventy four dollars. It's very expensive. Yeah, I I know somebody who likes Maker's Mark in milk. Hmm. That's well, I, maybe because like eggnog, you know, you put whiskey in that, and that's milkish, and that's good with alcohol in it. I don't think I've ever had eggnog with alcohol in. It. I've had the Southern Comfort eggnog, but not. That's like that's that is the best eggnog. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> Um, the cinnamon, the cinnamon one, I like better than the regular. One. Well, yeah, of course, because so, cinnamon so, is cinnamon is the shit, sir. Yeah. It is the absolute shit, and uh, we we will not hear anything else. Well, you're not going to be hearing anything bes- besmirching cinnamon from me, so. <laughs> Fuck no. Um. So yeah, or so like anything else because like we we've only we just been kind of catching up. We. Um, and I don't think we should. I think we just want to catch everybody up and and see how everything's going. Unless you want to do a round of stuff that we've been into. Well, I haven't really played much other than like one thing because I haven't really had. Ugh, I haven't really had much of a time to play things. So when I did, well, I actually have a, had a lot of time to play things, but for some reason I would like want to do other things. So I would like go chill upstairs or whatever but every time I would have time to play I would just be playing that Evil West but I got to a boss in it and I was like I think I'm done with this game because every, the boss was already kind of tough and then the game would crash on me and I was like well after I update maybe I come back to it but I put 10 hours into it so it was fun up until this point you know but that's maturity saying I'm I'm I don't have to like beat myself over the head with something that's not fun. Okay. I <laughs> I have not I've not I've gotten back into um the division. I have uh me and Pooh Bear started Borderlands one. That's been interesting. I started that with my, my son, but before the move, so I probably already talked about that. Yeah. So yeah, I've been started we've been we've been playing Borderlands one. Uh, but then they just moved, so we so it's been a little bit, um, and we um, 
and uh she my daughter has a um has her own uh youtube channel okay and one of her one uh one of the things that she does uh, mostly is focused on games but she did start playing she restarted uh uh the walking dead telltale game from beginning so that's been interesting watching watching her play that because it's been a while since I've played. So a lot of the little stuff, like I remember the big story beats, but I don't remember a lot of what's happening in the middle. So it's been interesting watching her. And she, her, um, her YouTube is, I'm trying to make sure that I spell it right. Let me find it. I think it's X, 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 I, O, Sims with a Z S I M Z X I O S I M Z. Okay. I think that's what it is. Oh, I, um, mm. I, I was looking at my thing and 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 they were, I had uninstalled it because I had finished it, but I did complete Kenna Bridge of Spirits, and that was an absolutely fantastic experience. Awesome. I'm in try. I'm in wanting to get into some. And every time, every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Division? To the division. Yeah. You would think that's like the opposite, you know? Because then division, like, pulling. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you're like undividing yourself from the division. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you had to get one in before we left. You had, you had to get one in. I guess. <laughs> Fuck it. I guess never mind. But yeah, um, I will say that uh, The Last of Us TV show has been great. So far, it's only been three episodes, but I did mention that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I finally watched the John Wick movies. I watched all three of those in the course of because they were because they're taking it off of uh, taking it off of HBO as of tomorrow. So I watched all three John Wick movies. So now you cannot judge me watching the John. They're saying that I haven't. I I wasn't judging you. I, every time there's something no, you no. haven't watched, I'm like, yo, man, I think you'd like this. You know. <laughs> no, no, but I, no, I'm not saying that you've done it, but I've been judged for not watching John Wick. John Wick is just really. John Wick is the Call of Duty of movie. <laughs> like, ain't much of a plot here. It's just like everything. Is, setting up these cool ass well I mean it's like, it's almost hearkening back to like why we loved action movies like in the 80s and 90s you're like like is the plot of I don't know even the plot what like one of the most high, highly regarded action movies of all time the predator the plot is not the most complicated thing in the world <laughs> yes very much so one of my favorite, one of my favorite action movies when I was younger, Commando. Not very much of a plot. I, I was gonna say that one, but like I thought people more have saw, more people have saw Predator, but Commando is fantastic. I, fucking, I used, I have not seen it in a long time, and I probably it probably doesn't hold up because oh, but, been... but that's it, it, it doesn't hold up, but that makes it better. <laughs> You know something that holds up surprisingly? Okay. And I didn't realize this until I just saw one that I watched do reactions. Uh just watched this movie for the first time in a long time. The Matrix still holds up. The first one. The Matrix still kinda holds up. Well, I've said the Matrix will always hold up because even if the graphics look or the special effects start looking more dated, it works because it's not supposed to be real in the first place. Exactly. So the the first Matrix holds up, and I like the I like the there's a couple of callbacks to the Matrix in the John Wick movie. So I, I really like that. You know, Lawrence Fishburne was in the was in two and three. Uh, at one point, he said he needs gun, gun, and like you know shit like that. Like th there's been some. There's been some there's been some Matrix callbacks in the John Wick. And I thought the um the villain of Commando is great. Yes, he's just like 
And you know the crazy part about it? We look at it now. Like, he was—he seemed like he was badass. And he's just a fucking chubby dude who used to be in the military. And he's wearing a fucking mesh vest for some reason. Like, I guess that's supposed to protect him from being stabbed. But, like, it don't stop, it don't stop these bullets, dog. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, it's just like, that... That 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 dude was just kind of like, yo, what's what 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 why why are you like this? <laughs> the 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 whole movie is why are you like this. The movie, when it comes <laughs> to that dude, Alyssa Milano plays in there. She's a kid. Yeah. And the Ray beginning, Don, Ray, the, Ray Don Chong is in that movie. The beginning sequence to where like. He's just like eating ice cream and carrying logs with one hand and like it's <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like a fucking it's a fucking it's like the beginning of a bounty commercial. <laughs> it's like he's like the carrying the log with one hand. We get it, you're strong. <laughs> <laughs> but like, come on, you're carrying a log with one hand. Like he carries the log with one hand like Kratos. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yep. Kratos is the god slayer and you just a man. So so God of War 2018 is Commando. <laughs> In the beginning at least. <laughs> Cuz there with so. his, his his kid and <laughs> I can I can I can see the parallels. There are some there are parallels. But yeah, so I don't. I don't think there's much else to talk about. I want. Um. There's there's been a few things that I've watched, but nothing much more than normal. Me watching just a shit ton of uh, YouTube. There is a game that I do play, but I'm waiting until they get the um, wait until they get some of the kinks worked out. There is a uh, a game is called. I think it's definitely not Friday. Is definitely not Friday. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. What? Yes, it is a game where you are. A, have you seen? You've seen Breaking Bad. No, I haven't. That's one well, thing one that people the, like. Well, like one 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 of the villains. I'm, I'm not. I'm not spoiling too much. One of the villains in the Breaking Bad. He runs his business out of his. Uh, he has a he has a chain of chicken joints, and he runs his he runs his drug business out of the 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 chicken joints. So basically, you start off where you start running a drug lab, um, and then you have your drugs delivered to your businesses. You can have like you can have a donut shop. You can have like a few different places and you just buy places around and you have your guys from your, your warehouse ship the stuff to the places and the people will come in there. They'll eat, they'll eat, you know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. There's going to be other kinds of drugs in the game, but they have not, they have not, uh, it's early access. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they haven't really act, act, have all of the, like the meth and, the, and stuff like that, the different versions of Coke. But right now it's just mostly just weed. There is three different types of weed, um, and so you have yeah. you have them do to your other places, and you can sell out of there, or you can sell. They call you on the phone and say, "Hey, we want some more, some so much of this thing," and so you take it to them. Take it to them. Yeah, I, I um I'm hoping like it's early. It just hit early access. I'm waiting for them to kind of work the kinks out a bit before I try to jump into that. But it seems like a fun game. Yeah, I was just looking at the Steam page. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems like a it seems like a cool little game, um, but it's early access right now, um, and there's there's a lot that needs. And the uh, the guy who runs the like the KFC equivalent, um, he will send his henchmen dressed up like chickens to murder everyone in your buildings. Hmm. When you get a little too big for your britches, he sends his man and them to come kill her. Murder. Yep. I, I think we did it, man. I think we got it. Hell yeah. Any, anything else you wanted to say before we before we split? Like I'm 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 definitely happy to be back. I miss I missed y'all a little bit. 
Um, I, I, I did. I missed y'all a little bit. But I think that was just kind of like me being my old surly self. But it was it was it was fun while it lasted. Now it's time to back, time to get back to work, especially with the especially with the the the, the, reactions. the reactions. Like because we we're really starting. We're doing pretty well. In reaction. We got like three hundred subscribers. Yeah, we need to um get back to that because we were doing really really well of it not um lapsing, but you know, yeah, can't do nothing about life. Yeah, life got in the way, but we're going to get back to it. So, like, check us out over there, Geek Samurai Universe uh, YouTube channel. And I think we hit it. Um, do the things, like, share, subscribe. Um, tell everybody that we back. And we'll be back uh, in your ear holes with more podcast goodness. Peace out to the Warriors, yo. Later. <laughs>